This is Robert Kraft, and I'm coming to you live on SNN Live, and we are at the LD Micro Main Event 2019 in Bel Air, California. With me right now is Kurt Sorshak from Zbeck Adsorption, publicly traded company. I got two symbols for you: XBC on the TSX Venture and XEBEF on the OTCQX. Kurt, welcome back. Good to see you. Yeah, great seeing you, Robert. All right, nice being here. It's nice to have you, and uh, welcome to L.A. Yeah, <laughs> so so uh, before we get into an update, you know, I want to start off with an overview of the company. So with that, let's get it. Yeah, so Seabag uh, is a renewable gas company. We basically produce renewable natural gas and hydrogen or renewable hydrogen. So we last had you on the program here in April. So uh, we're actually recording this interview on December 11th, because, uh, and, I, and I specifically am saying that because the company has put out a good bit of news very, very recently. So with that, what are some of the highlights since our last interview in April? Well, I would say one for shareholders, you know, in April when we spoke last, our share price probably was about 75 cent. Uh, today we are trading like at 210, 220. So a significant uh, improvement on our share performance, uh, driven also by uh, company results. So we've turned profitable this year. We reported now three quarters, uh, all quarters are profitable. We are growing significantly, uh, to just uh, put it in context, uh, in 2018 we did about $20 million in revenue. This year we're going to end up doing between 48, 49 million in revenue. We probably come out at about 4 million in net earnings, 6 million in EBITDA. And I've already been guiding into 2020 with a strong order backlog that we have. And, and even as recently as, I believe it was yesterday and the day before, you announced an acquisition as well as a bought deal. Can you uh, comment on those? Yeah, so um, uh, a couple of things there. Um, we had announced a strategy where we be creating service centers throughout North America uh, that will support our clean tech installations. Now, there are a lot of provinces in Canada and states down here in the United States where you have renewable gas mandates. Uh, that means uh, renewable gas systems will go in place. And in order to support those systems, so if somebody buys a two, three, four million dollar system from us, they want to have service, support, maintenance, operations potentially. And in order to do that, we have a roll up strategy where we are buying. Uh, air compressor service companies retrain some of the technicians, uh, make them capable of servicing and maintaining and operating our systems. And just yesterday, we announced our first acquisition here in California, up in uh, San Francisco, of a very nice company. Uh, we are adding uh, 17 employees, about six and a half million US in revenue to us, uh, about um, uh, almost close to 700 million, uh, 700 thousand dollars of EBITDA. So uh, a good acquisition for us. In addition, we announced um, a bought deal, I think it was the day before, uh, uh, for $20 million. Um, uh, it's going to be uh, um, uh, closed uh, before uh, the new year, somewhere on the 27th. Uh, that will give us uh, sufficient um, uh, working capital, not only uh, for general uh, purposes, corporate purposes, but also for our um, uh, renewable gas projects that we want to do for acquisitions, um, some R&D, some IT expenditures that we are having. But no, very exciting times for us uh, a a as we grow. And before that, uh, just a week before, I think it was last week, we announced that we won five projects here in California. So a good a good follow on with this acquisition that we announced yesterday on the news that we uh, 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 won five projects here, uh, which is uh, a great entry into the California market for us. So, you know, I, I do this, and I'm sure a lot of other people do this, but, you know, at the beginning of each year, we always have our checklist for things that we wanted to accomplish throughout yes. the year. You know, so I, I got to ask, being that we're at the year end, would yes. you say everything that you just discussed in terms of your updates and highlights for the year, was that all on the checklist that you were hoping to accomplish for 2019? Yes, uh, uh, we had, if you saw one, three, three milestones we wanted to achieve. I've, we've achieved uh, uh, two so far. 
One was an acquisition in the U.S., which we did uh, yesterday. Uh, we also uh, had as a, a key milestone that we uh, uh, would like to win a larger landfill gas contract. We've announced that we've been selected in a tender. We are now working through the contract. Uh, that's a $20 million order for us. That's not yet contracted, but has been awarded. Uh, and the last outstanding thing is, uh, and that I haven't achieved yet, we are working on it, is a, a build on operate project up in Canada where we basically start uh, building, operating and owning a renewable gas plant and selling the renewable gas to a gas utility under a 20-year off-take agreement. So that's what, what is still outstanding, what I need to still try to achieve by the end of the year. Hey, there's still time. <clears throat> yeah, not much, <laughs> but a little bit. So now looking ahead, you know, from what you can tell us, what would you say are some of the growth drivers or, or even the goals for 2020? Well, for 2020, I've been providing guidance uh, with our Q3 results. Um, uh, I expect that we're going to be doing 80 to $90 million in revenue next year. Uh, we have now uh, orders uh, 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 over $100 million. So I, I have good visibility into next year as to what we can do. Uh, the question is all one of execution. Uh, can we execute? Because it's really difficult to grow a manufacturing business because we manufacture everything. To grow a manufacturing business that quickly is a challenge. But I think we can do 80, 80 to 90 million, of which 30 to 35 million will be in the service business. So we intend to buy further service companies. With this recent acquisition, we now hit about 20 million in annualized revenue. Um, if we do three more, let's say, we should be hitting our 30 to $35 million revenue target for next year. The rest is then in renewable natural gas and hydrogen. Um, uh, on the earnings side, I expect 7 to 9% earnings, uh, 11 to 13% EBITDA. So EBITDA is going to start pushing $10 million, hopefully. <clears throat> so, so very positive and the uh, regulatory environment is improving. Yeah. Um, in Canada, we most likely will see the introduction of the Canadian Clean Fuel Standard. That will include a 10% renewable gas mandate by 2030. That will require the, the establishment of about six to 800 renewable gas facilities, 15 to $18 billion in investment. Only on the equipment side, that means about $3 billion worth of upgrading equipment. So I'd be hopeful to win a, a good chunk of that in, in Canada over the next 10 years. Plus, obviously, for our build on operate, that also opens up a lot of opportunities because we need to build six to 800 renewable gas facilities. So a lot of opportunity. In Europe, the same thing, uh, that there seems to be a trend to increase the renewable gas mandates that they have, which means further investments into renewable gas. So it, it, a lot of activity. Also on the hydrogen side, I need to mention that too. Um, we are doing five to seven million this year in hydrogen. Next year, probably 15 to 20. I already have in order backlog over $13 million in orders for hydrogen. So there's a lot ongoing in all our business segments. Uh, that's a good thing, but it's a big challenge too. Absolutely. So where can our audience go and find more information about the company? Well, you can go onto our website. There is on the investor uh, tab. Uh, we put out a lot of that information. You can also reach out to us. Uh, we compile uh, like in the cloud um, uh, all kinds of information, news releases that come out. Uh, research papers. If people are interested, we can provide that information. Uh, there are also now uh, six investments bank covering us. So there's research reports out where people can read up on us. Um, yeah, uh, a lot of activity all around. For sure. And that's zbeck.com, right? Zbeckinc.com. Gotcha. And that's x e b e c i n c.com. My name is Robert Kraft, and I'm coming to you live on SNN Live, and we're at the LD Micro Main Event 2019 in Bel Air, California. With me again has been Kurt Sorschak from Zbeck at Sorption, publicly traded company. I got two symbols for you, XBC on the TSX Venture and XEBEF on the OTCQX. Kurt, always a pleasure. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Pleasure being here. <laughs>